I want to thank you for inviting me to come. Uh, I'm happy to go anywhere where you invite me. <laughs> I'm going to speak to you briefly from the book of Romans. And, and the first chapter. My main text is verse 16. And this is what Paul says. He says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I want you to understand what he's saying. There is something about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not quite sure how that word gospel translates. But in English, it simply means good news. It's good news. It's used good news. Yeah. So it is good news. And the reason I come to Uzbekistan is because I have good news. That's what Paul said. He's talking to the people in Italy. Good news. But then he says something else. He says in verse 3, concerning God's Son, Jesus, made of the flesh, but in verse 4, declared to be the Son of God with power. So what Paul is saying is something very simple. The whole life and death of Jesus was a declaration of power. Do you understand? Not weakness, but power. And that's what we have in, in the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's why Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Because he said, this good news which we bring is the power of God. And wherever I go, whether it's in England, in Russia, the Ukraine, or here in Uzbekistan, I come to declare the power of God. And in fact, I sometimes say that the whole purpose of my life, the whole reason why I live, is exactly what Paul says. To declare the power of God. You see, religion is very weak, it's powerless. Religion is very little different to politics. <laughs> it tries to control you. But the fact is, the message we have is of the power of God. And in everything we see the power of God. And if you go back to verse 4, Paul says that Jesus was declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. And, and the more you look into the New Testament, the more you see two things. 
In the whole of the New Testament, you see two critical things. One, what was the message of Jesus? What was the message of Jesus? Yes, forgiveness of sin. Salvation. Deliverance. Healing. But he mentioned one thing more than any other thing in his ministry. It's the kingdom of God. It's the family of God. And so the message of Jesus was that we could become sons and daughters of God. And our kingdom isn't down here. Our kingdom is with God. Hallelujah. So we have something far greater than anything I can have down here. That's why Paul says, I would rather be in heaven than on earth. And then he said the second thing, and this is the second part of the message of the New Testament, is that by a miracle, Jesus came back to life after he died. Now, all right, we talk about resurrection. No, but come on, let's talk about it in simple English, simple terms that you understand. Jesus died. He couldn't die because he had eternal life. His body died. But where is Jesus now? He's not dead. He's alive in heaven. And do you know what he's doing up there? <laughs> now I like this bit. <laughs> What's Jesus doing? The Bible says he's up there praying for you. Isn't that wonderful? You know, when I come here, I've got people back home in England praying for me. I've got one man in particular. I talk to him all the time. I talked to him yesterday. He's, he will, he'll probably never come here. But he's praying for me that the power of God will be here. Now, it's the same with Jesus. His whole purpose is when he knows you and when you become a child of God, Jesus is always there, alive, in heaven, with his Father. And you know, this, this touches me. Because before coming here, I had to go away to pray. By the way, I look at my watch to tell, remind me which day. <laughs> but the whole thing is this. I went away to pray. And what I understood when I was praying was this. What did Jesus say to his disciples? Well, he said a lot of things. <laughs> but there's one thing that I was especially thinking about when I was praying about you. He said, when I go to the Father, Mm -hmm. He says, when I go to the Father, I'm going to ask him 
to send you the Holy Spirit. Okay? So, why do you receive the Holy Spirit? Because Jesus said, when I go to the Father, I'm going to ask him to send you the Holy Spirit. So, that's me. I've only been in ministry for 70 years. And so I said, Lord, I'm just a young man, I'm just starting. <laughs> yeah, but what did I say? I said, Jesus, I want you to send me more of the Holy Spirit. Because, you see, I never have enough. I never have enough of the Holy Spirit. I never have enough of Jesus. I love being with you. Well, if I could, I'd spend one of my lives out here with you. Maybe I need about ten lives. One in Siberia, one in Uzbekistan, one with my family in England, <laughs> but one with you, you see. So what I'm asking for is for more Holy Spirit. No, I don't ask Misha. He doesn't have enough. <laughs> I don't even ask your pastor. Because by the time we finish, I hope he'll be asking. <laughs> I'm asking Jesus. Please go to the Father. Tell him I'm going to be in Uzbekistan. And I need more Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Well, I came from Tashkent in a car. You know, whenever I get in somebody else's car, the first thing I look at... <laughs> do you know what it is? I look at the fuel tank. <laughs> to make sure he has enough fuel in that tank to get me there. <laughs> Uh -huh. And before I come here, I make sure I have to have enough of the Holy Spirit. You see, I don't want to, to say something that you misunderstand. But receiving the Holy Spirit isn't just one thing, it's over and it's finished. Но uh, когда ты получаешь Дух Святой, это не одномоментное событие, которое ты что-то получил, и все, на этом финиш. I received the Holy Spirit when I was 15 years old. Я получил крещение Духом Святым, когда мне было 15 лет. But that doesn't last me forever. Но этого не хватит навсегда. I want more. And more. And more. And to come here, I needed more. And then when I go back to England, I'll need more. And I'm always needing more. I don't have enough power. I don't see enough miracles. I don't... I want more and more. And more. <laughs> uh, if I tell you a simple story, Many, many years ago, before you were born, <laughs> you know, it's rather nice when I say that. <laughs> before you were born, before your pastor was born, <laughs> I was a pastor in England, and I was an evangelist. And I saw many people repent. I planted churches. I saw incredible miracles of healing. <laughs> I mean, one of, one of the first miracles I saw was a man, literally, God raised him from the dead. 
И одно из первых чудес, которые я видел в своем служении, это Бог человека фактически воскресил из мертвых. Now, I was only just a young man. You may know I started preaching when I was 13. And if any of you are over 13 years old, you should be preaching the gospel. And don't tell me you're too old. No, I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you. You're neither too young nor too old. When did, where did I start leading people to Jesus first? In my school. Are any of you young people in school or in college? Uh -huh. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Well, that's where I started. And by the time I'd finished, the, my class master gave his life to Jesus. And two of the boys became preachers. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. <laughs> Come on, you young people. <laughs> you start where you are. You see, people always said I was too young. When I said I want to preach in the church, I was 13. They said you're too young. So I preached in the school. <laughs> Oh, and I did preach in the church. <laughs> you understand? But the trouble now, people say I'm too old. <laughs> so I was, once I was too young, now I'm too old. <laughs> I wasn't too young, nor am I too old. I mean, just look at me, I'm as young as you are. <laughs> In fact, I'm younger than what I was when I came here. <laughs> That's true, isn't it? <laughs> you understand. But you see, what Paul is saying is this. Come back to verse 16. Well, I can come to one other <laughs> verse. <laughs> because he actually says that he is a debtor. Verse 14. Stop that word debtor. Now just look what he's saying. Paul was a Jew mm -hmm. of the highest level. He was a born-again believer. But he said, I'm a debtor to the Greeks and to, the, and to them from in Uzbekistan. Mm -hmm. Do you know, one of the first things I saw when I began ministry in the Soviet Union, I knew that other preachers went. But I found out that virtually all the preachers from America or from England went to the Soviet Union to give them something. Но uh, я заметил, что другие проповедники из Америки, из Англии приезжали в Советский Союз, чтобы что-то дать им. I was different. Uh, я по-другому. When I went there, когда я приехал, I found that under persecution they had a faith stronger than we had in England. Я обнаружил, что в гонении у них вера была сильнее, чем у нас в Англии. Do you understand? And when I went, 
I was learning and receiving from them. И когда я приехал, я учился и получал нечто от них. When I come here, когда я приезжаю сюда, I receive something from you. Я принимаю нечто от вас. I see your building. Я вижу ваше здание. I see your pastor. Я вижу вашу церковь. I see you people. Я вижу ваших людей. And somehow you have something. No, no, I'm going to tell you the truth. And I'm probably the only preacher that will ever say this. You have something we don't have in the West. Do you understand? So I want to encourage you. I want to be a blessing. And you see, this is why to me, my life is only to demonstrate the power of God. So what happened? I was evangelizing even in football stadiums under communism. Because I remember what happened. I was there. Yes, uh, as an evangelist. I was also, I was a Bible smuggler. But, <laughs> and oh yes, I, I, I went to prison. The best year of my life was a year in a communist prison. That's another story I'll tell you next time I come. <laughs> But you see, I was preaching in a church just like this. Mm -hmm. Just like this. But of course, the only difference I know today is work day. The church was so full, people couldn't get in. There were more people outside than inside the church. And I sensed the presence of the Holy Spirit. And so I said to the pastor, we need to rent a football stadium and get thousands of people. The pastor said, you can't. You can't. I said, you can. He said, you can't. I said, you can. <laughs> so after a short time, we went to the stadium. And I said to the directors of the football stadium, I want to rent the stadium to talk about Jesus. And of course, see a lot of miracles and show the power that God has. He says, you can't. Why? This stadium belongs to the Communist Party. This was in the Communist period. And he said, we are also members of the Communist Party. You can't have the stadium. We can't rent it to you. So I began to pray. I said, Lord, I need this stadium. Now will you give it to me, Lord? The men kept saying no. So I prayed differently. I said, Lord, you see these two men here that are the directors, these communist men that are stopping me taking the stadium. You know, you know just like you here. Hello. <laughs> And so I said, Holy Spirit, You see those two men? Change them. Yeah, both of you. <laughs> I mean, you've got a red jumper on, so you know. <laughs> And you know, I looked at their eyes. 
And suddenly their eyes change. Holy Spirit. See, the Holy Spirit's now in you. <laughs> yes, amen. Good. <laughs> Pastor, these two are filled with the Holy Spirit. Because <laughs> I was doubting. <laughs> so what happened? Now, this is how God works miracles. These men who said you can't rent the stadium, when the Holy Spirit came on them, said, no, we can't rent you the stadium, but there's nothing to stop us giving it to you for nothing. <laughs> we have all watched with horror the scenes from Ukraine. How the country has been plunged into war. But what can we do? As Christians, we can pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Many of them are now facing an uncertain future. Over the last few years, the churches in Ukraine have enjoyed a freedom that is not available in neighboring nations. Jesus said, you will hear of wars and threats of wars, but don't panic. Nation will go to war against nation and kingdom against kingdom. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And the good news about the kingdom will be preached so that all nations will hear it. Please help us support them. Visit eurovision.org.uk forward slash donation. Do you want the fire of God? That Pentecost experience will only come for one purpose, that you might glorify the name of Jesus. Prophetic Vision magazine is the teaching ministry of David Hathaway. Request your free copy and let God show you the path to revival in your life and your nation. Visit eurovision.org dot uk forward slash contact God has a plan and a purpose for you to fulfill through faith you will see miracles heal the sick and your prayers will be answered. In David Hathaway's two new books, A Faith Beyond and Power Your Inheritance, you will discover that with God, all things are possible. Order these books today. Visit eurovision.org.uk forward slash shop.